Tesla stock is currently down over 11% today. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to talk about what's going on in our markets because you're actually seeing one of the worst days for the NASDAQ in hundreds of days. These earnings we had last night from Tesla and Google are having a large ripple effect throughout our markets but let's start with some tesla specific news elon musk did a poll on x that says should tesla invest five billion dollars into xai assuming the valuation is set by several credible outside investors board approval and shareholder votes are needed so this is just to test the waters 68.4 percent of investors over on x say yes and 31.6% say no. Considering Tesla now has a record cash pile of over $30 billion, $5 billion to invest into a XAI, it's not going to make or break anything. That's almost the amount of money Tesla added in cash in the last quarter. Specifically, Tesla added $3.9 billion to their cash and investments up to now $30.7 billion total. And I actually think Wall Street would like to see Tesla invest some of their money into other AI ventures. Gene Munster says some perspective on the distant potential that Tesla invests 5 billion in XAI as suggested by Elon's X poll yesterday. The poll found 68% of voters, aka Tesla fans, supported the investment. Bottom line is this would have a material benefit to XAI, given it would almost double XAI's capital raised to date as for Tesla, the input it, the impact would be more subtle if xai's post money valuation was 29 billion the recent round was 24 billion post money this implies tesla would hold 17 percent of xai assuming no dilution and xai reaches a valuation of 200 billion in the next five years it would add just over four percent to tesla's market cap around 30 billion dollars from a return on capital perspective a 600 percent return over five years is a great outcome my recommendation is tesla should invest 20 billion dollars into xai to move the needle for investors so not 5 billion but 20 billion invested into xai monster also says on the conference call elon said once people experience fsd they tend to keep using it which suggests that not all people continue to use it therefore it's reasonable to believe miles driven slowed throughout the quarter and and yes there was the free trial and some people are not always going to forever be subscribed to any product or service for that matter so that's that's already something that we know Gene Munster says two key takeaways. Number one, FSD is a beta product that initial users are still trying to figure out. Number two, focusing on the month to month misses the point. The reality is autonomous miles driven skyrocketed in the June quarter and will likely take another step function up when V12.5 comes out later this year. While we're still likely a couple years away from unsupervised FSD, Elon says as early as the end of this year and would be shocked if it was not by next year, Tesla remains best positioned ahead of Waymo to be first to reach a million million daily autonomous users. And look at this, it's also being reported that the Irvine Police Department in Orange County is now getting a cyber truck added to their fleet. Elon says Tesla is likely to receive regulatory approval to launch FSD in other markets like Europe and China by the end of the year. Google says they are investing another $5 billion into Waymo, their self-driving robo-taxi unit. And Elon Musk responds to this and says, Waymo money, like Waymo money is needed. And Elon Musk last night shared the first images of Tesla's Dojo Super computer which is pretty dang cool and it's being reported that dojo one will have roughly 8000 h100 equivalent of training online by the end of the year elon says not massive but not trivial either barclays today adjust their price target on tesla to 220 dollars per share from 225 dollars per share and that's really marginal considering even if you look at the numbers themselves for tesla that didn't come out that great they weren't terrible they could have been worse but they were not 
great. It was really a mixed bag of mixed bags across the board. One of the most mixed bags I've ever seen. EPS came in at 52 cents. We were expecting 62 cents. That was a miss. Revenue came in over a billion dollars higher than expected. That was good, higher than expected. Auto gross margins came in better than expected but free cash flow missed by about $600 million. So it, it was really just a mixed bag. And, and if you wanted to be an analyst, I mean, from a purely, you know, EPS or forward multiple perspective, you would have to take down your price targets at least marginally by missing EPS by 10 cents. I mean, if you think Tesla should trade at, let's say a 75 times multiple or something along those lines, and you miss by 10 cents, that takes the price target down theoretically $7.50. Bank of America Securities adjust the price target on Tesla to $255 from $260 and maintains a buy rating. So another just marginal price target reduction. New Street downgrades Tesla to neutral from buy, cuts price target to $225 from $200. $35. So again, another marginal price target reduction. Cantor Fitz Fitzgerald downgrades Tesla to neutral from overweight, adjust price target to $245 from $230. So that's actually a $15 price target raise, but they went from overweight down to neutral. They skip past the buy and straight to neutral. This is a pretty big one. Piper Sandler adjusts the price target on Tesla to $300 from $205 per share, maintains their overweight rating. So that's a $95 price target increase. Goldman Sachs adjusts price target on Tesla to $230 per share from $248 per share and maintains their neutral rating. PNB Paribas Exane adjust price target on Tesla to $103 per share from $105 per share maintains an underperform rating. Citigroup adjust their price target on Tesla to $258 per share from $274 per share and maintains a neutral rating. Truist adjust price target on Tesla to $215 per share from $162 per share and they maintain their hold rating. So a lot of firms out there lowering their price targets marginally, but some of them like Piper Sandler raising their price targets by quite a bit. And really, as I explained in the last video, yes, Tesla is down 10, 11% today. But if you're a longer term investor, even if you have a six or 12 month time horizon, nothing changed today or yesterday, technically. Nothing changed, right? It's the same story as it was then, as it was yesterday. We just did not get the hype the momentum in the near term that would help tesla move higher numbers were a mixed bag i didn't think the numbers mattered much anyways and that's why tesla was was not doing really much of anything down like two percent before the earnings call you did not get new details on new models like none at all literally not a single new detail which was important we needed that to continue this this hype and this momentum in tesla we did not get really any new information about the robo taxi event either not a good reason why it was delayed and it looks like as far as definitive guidance for when the first ride will take place we didn't get anything definitive on that front either. Elon said he would be shocked if it was not by the end of this year or 2025. But Wall Street wanted to hear, hey, we're going to be doing RoboTaxi rides for sure next year. Wall Street wanted something definitive. We did not get that. But were we expecting that? Not really. And after Tesla rallied over 70% in the last quarter, you know, you should expect to see some kind of large pullback following that move now we also did get google earnings that came out last night as well google is currently down 4.65 percent really dragging down all of your big tech names nvidia is down four percent microsoft down three percent amazon's down two meta's down almost four apple is down about three percent it's it's a lot of this sell first ask questions later because 
really Google's AI endeavors didn't impress investors. Yeah, it's helping them cut cost. They're, um, you know, kind of trying different things. But it wasn't that knock your socks off AI earnings. And these stocks are priced for that. And that's why you're seeing them give up some of those gains today. What's actually interesting about today, if you look at the S&P 500, that is down 1.62%, and you look at the Russell 2000, the Russell is actually only down a tenth of 1% at the time of recording this video. It looks like it's going to go positive here in just a few moments. So this is definitely a big tech weighing down the markets kind of day. Now, we did have some data that came out as well this morning. The Bank of Canada did indeed cut rates again from 4.75% down to 4.5% following their last month's CPI report that came in hotter than expected. That was pretty interesting. But you do have a goods trades balance of negative $96.8 billion. That's less than the $102 billion that was expected. Retail inventories excluding autos month over month came in at 0.2 percent we were expecting negative 0.1 percent wholesale inventories month over month came in at 0.2 percent we were also expecting 0.2 percent so these numbers affect gdp quite a bit but the data the markets were really paying attention to was s p global composite pmi that came in at 55 we were expecting 47 uh, or 54.7 S&P global manufacturing PMI came in at 49.5 we were expecting 51.8 and S&P global services PMI came in at 56 we were expecting 55 so all of these beat across the board showing the economy is likely doing better than than some people thought with that said, at some point today, we will get a new estimate for the Atlanta Fed GDP Now tracker. It's currently at 2.7%, but here you can see the next update is Wednesday, July 24th. That is today. For whatever reason, it is not updated, but you're definitely going to see um, these numbers move downwards, at least marginally, in my personal opinion. We do have actual GDP uh, quarter over quarter coming out tomorrow morning and that's going to be a pretty big event current estimates are about two and a half percent for that as well as durable goods orders that will be coming out tomorrow as well here on the day today 10-year treasury yields are actually down about two and a half basis points which is helping that out performance of the russell 2000 the percent of stocks currently trading above their 50-day moving average is now to 66.84 percent down about 2.4 percent today alone so 2.4 percent of stocks are falling under their 50-day moving average today cnn's fear and greed index today is neutral at 47 yesterday it was neutral at 55 so this is quite a one day decline for the cnn fear and greed indicator market momentum is neutral stock price strength is neutral stock price breadth is fear put and call options is neutral market volatility extreme fear safe haven demand is fear and junk bond demand is extreme greed you can see here the dow is down 0.86 percent s p is down 1.68 percent the nasdaq is down 2.65 percent the russell's down a third of one percent now and the vix is up almost 15 percent to 16.90 we're also going to be getting apparently a speech from biden tonight and there was a video of him getting off of air force one yesterday um some ai companies have said that video was all ai generated that it wasn't even real so we don't know what's going on there were many reports that there was some kind of medical incident in las vegas um, within the past week and that's potentially why biden is stepping down and we really haven't seen biden ever since we haven't heard from him and, and that's pretty unusual for a presidential candidate to step down and not hear from them for a week so i think some people are a little nervous about that and that could be having an effect on markets today as well we do have some earnings today and after hours from chipotle ford service now ibm viking therapeutics las vegas sands Numat, saliska whirlpool and waste management tomorrow morning you have american airlines abv hasbro honeywell rtx uh new york community bank ugh, uh, ugh. 
That's ugly. Southwest, Kirig, Dr. Pepper, AstraZeneca, and Valero. Thursday and after hours, Dexcom, Skechers, Texas, uh, Roadhouse, Decker's Brands, Boston Beer, Juniper, Lending Tree, Appfolio, and Noi. And then Friday, you have Bristol Myers Squibb, 3M, Charter, um, Colgate, T. Rowe Price, and others pre-market here today's sentiment for tesla as you would expect is extremely bearish at 22 the bears think they have everything figured out um following today's decline in tesla when in all reality we were expecting some kind of client decline in tesla if the two requirements were not met again that was a definitive guidance for the RoboTaxi event number one but when to actually expect RoboTaxi rides um, would start i didn't think that was going to be answered but i did have some confidence that we would get um more definitive guidance or maybe outright get to see what the new models would look like coming from tesla but elon musk said he did not want to jeopardize near-term demand for teslas um, because these products are going to be pretty awesome so we'll see what that means was not enough to uh, keep the momentum going in tesla stock nonetheless message volume today is extremely high at 85 and the participation ratio today is high at 55 tesla's short interest of free float today is at 3.79 percent you have 25.9 billion dollars that's currently sold short in tesla totaling 105.12 million shares that are currently sold short interesting flow sentiment over on ortex shows there's 42 different uh, trades from hedge funds and institutions totaling 13.83 million dollars with a positive order value of 72 percent today so it's actually pretty uh, pretty positive for what you would expect with the stock down 10%. Now, from a technical perspective in Tesla, I actually have these two downtrending lines pulled up here on the chart. It kind of makes a channel because you can connect these lines in a couple different ways. The bottom end line here is around uh, 220 for that support. And look what happened today. You hit as low as about 215, and now you're back in this channel. You're back around 220. So not all hope is lost. I think actually in the next couple of days, you'll get back above this upper bound trend line, and this will support a stabilization in Tesla stock and actually can start to give us some upside momentum again. Because, you know, let, let's again be honest, nothing changed. With tesla earnings nothing like not for better or for worse nothing changed it's the same thesis as it was yesterday in tesla and two weeks in tesla two weeks ago in tesla when tesla was 271 dollars per share nothing's changed since that moment i guess technically the robotex event was delayed by two months but again the time frame changed the thesis did not change now, here today, you have an RSI of 46.86, which is below the neutral level of 50, supporting some stabilization and likely even a bounce over the next coming days. And if you are someone that did not get allocated to Tesla before and you missed out on the, the last rally, it's potentially a good time to get uh, back into Tesla stock. But that's not it's not a recommendation. That's not financial advice. And you can see the macd has started to curl down quite a bit pretty negative macd is at 12.18 signal line at 15.95 so we will have a deeper breakdown of all of this in the next video so stay tuned to the channel for that one coming out at 8 p.m eastern standard time tonight you guys have a fantastic rest of your day hit the like button as well as subscribe to the channel on your way out of this video if you guys want to come trade with us live in real time as well check out that link down below in the description of this video you guys have a fantastic rest of your day and i will see you in the next one